It was the evening of October 29th, 1929. The day that would live in history as Black Tuesday. Dorothy Livermore met her husband at the door with tears in her eyes. She had been listening to the radio all day and she knew it had been one of the worst days in the history of the stock market. She knew that many of Wall Street's biggest investors were ruined. Some had even jumped out of windows in despair. Many had lost every penny of their fortunes in a day of panic and chaos on the New York Stock Exchange. She assumed her husband, Jesse, was one of them. Standing behind Mrs. Livermore were many of the servants who worked at their enormous mansion in the town of Great Neck in Long Island. The servants also had tears in their eyes. They had spent much of the day hiding jewelry, paintings, and other valuables around the house because Mrs. Livermore was afraid they'd be confiscated in the bankruptcy that was sure to come. Faced with this somber scene, it took Jesse Livermore a few moments to realize why everyone was crying. He tried to explain to his wife and servants what it meant to sell short. You mean we're not ruined? Asked Dorothy. No, darling, said Livermore. I've just had my best trading day ever. We are fabulously rich and we can do whatever we like. That was an understatement. By the end of the worst week in the history of Wall Street, Jesse Livermore had made close to $100 million. It was roughly $1.31 billion in today's money. And he did it in just seven days of trading. For Jesse Livermore, making huge sums of money trading stocks and commodities was nothing new. He'd been doing it ever since he was a teenager. By the time he was 40, he was one of the richest men in the country. And it was all because he had a secret. He had an uncanny technique for knowing which way a given stock or the market as a whole would move next, up or down. He called it the pivotal point. But Jesse Livermore never revealed how to determine the pivotal point. So his secret has remained shrouded in mystery ever since his death. In a moment, you'll meet the man who finally cracked the code of the pivotal point. According to this man's computer modeling, Jesse Livermore's secret can still be used in today's stock market. Since 1999, Livermore's pivotal point technique has shown a back-tested return on select stocks as high as 7,051%. That's high enough to turn a typical 50-year-old man's nest egg of $100,000 into over $7 million by the time he reaches full retirement age. But to understand the pivotal point, you have to go back to the beginning of Jesse Livermore's story. Born in 1877, Jesse Larston Livermore was a quiet boy who liked nothing better than to read the financial pages in the newspaper. He ran away from home at the age of 14 when his abusive father forced him to quit school and go to work on the family farm. But his mother knew her smart and sensitive son wasn't cut out to be a farmer. To help him move to Boston, she gave Jesse all the money she'd saved by pinching pennies around the house. It came to a grand total of $6. Less than a year later, Jesse paid her back with the equivalent of $29,000 in today's money. Jesse put the cash on her kitchen table and his mother's jaw dropped. It was more money than she'd seen in her life. Where did you get all this? She asked in amazement. You'll hear young Jesse's surprise answer in a moment. But first, please watch this. Jesse Livermore, the greatest trader in stock market history, called his secret the pivotal point. In 1929, he used it to make 1.3 billion in today's dollars in just seven days of trading. For decades, the pivotal point has remained shrouded in mystery. But thanks to the investigative research of prize-winning journalist, market analyst, and trader John Markman, Jesse Livermore's secret has been revealed at last. 
Please join us on Tuesday, February 14th for an in-depth discussion with John Markman on Jesse Livermore's Pivotal Point. You'll get the chance to receive Markman's new ebook, Pivotal Point Trading, absolutely free. Don't delay. Reserve your spot by clicking the button below the screen. When Jesse Livermore's mother asked him how he managed to earn $29,000 in a few short months, Jesse said, I made it in the bucket shops. At the turn of the century, bucket shops were gambling parlors where people bet on stocks instead of horses. In fact, no actual stocks changed hands in a bucket shop. Customers bet on the movement of stock prices without owning the underlying securities. But the customers won, or more often lost, plenty of money in bucket shops. Jesse placed his first trade in a bucket shop at the age of 15. He bought shares of Burlington Railway on margin for $5 then sold them for $8.12, making a quick return on his money of 62%. Courage? No. If all I have is $10 and I risk it, I am much braver than when I risk a million and have another million salted away. By the age of 16, Livermore had taken more than a quarter of a million dollars in today's money from the bucket shops. He won so much money, in fact, that before long, he was banned from every bucket shop in Boston. So he traveled from city to city in search of bucket shops that would take his bets. He often wore disguises to escape attention, but his youthful age and boyish good looks always gave him away. Most bucket shops were owned and operated by gangsters especially the notorious Rothstein gang that would later fix the 1919 World Series. Rothstein and his gang knew there were only three possible ways for Jesse Livermore to be winning so much money from them. Either he was very lucky, or he was cheating, or he had a way to predict stock prices that nobody else knew. One way or the other, they didn't want him in their bucket shops anymore so they made him an offer he couldn't refuse. And Jesse took the hint. At the age of 22, he decided to move to New York City and take a shot at the biggest gambling parlor of them all, the New York Stock Exchange. In a moment, you'll find out how he did there. But first, please watch this. Jesse Livermore, the greatest trader in stock market history, called his secret the pivotal point. In 1929, he used it to make 1.3 billion in today's dollars in just seven days of trading. For decades, the pivotal point has remained shrouded in mystery. But thanks to the investigative research of prize-winning journalist, market analyst, and trader John Markman, Jesse Livermore's secret has been revealed at last. Please join us on Tuesday, February 14th for an in-depth discussion with John Markman on Jesse Livermore's Pivotal Point. You'll get the chance to receive Markman's new ebook, Pivotal Point Trading, absolutely free. Don't delay. Reserve your spot by clicking the button below the screen. Jesse Livermore's first few years in New York were difficult because there was a difference between gambling in the bucket shops and trading real stocks on Wall Street. Here is John Markman, the author of the annotated edition of Reminiscences of a Stock Operator, the most widely read book about Jesse Livermore. One of the most frustrating things for Livermore was that in the bucket shops, he could buy or sell a stock instantly, and he'd always get the same price shown on the chalkboard. But on the New York Stock Exchange, trading took time and the prices were constantly changing. So Jesse didn't always get the price he was quoted. At first, this threw a wrench into his system, but soon he learned how to overcome it. And in fact, he learned a lot about how to trade stocks in those first few years in New York. By 1906, Jesse was starting to get the hang of it. He sold short just after the devastating San Francisco earthquake, and he made $250,000 in just three days. That's about $6 million today. The following year, he did it again. In 1907, the Knickerbocker Trust, the largest trust company in New York, suddenly failed. 
It triggered a run on the banks throughout New York City, and soon there was no money on Wall Street. There was an area on the floor of the stock exchange called the Money Post where traders would go to borrow cash for trading on margin. But in the panic of 1907, the Money Post ran out of money. Everybody wanted to sell, but nobody had any cash to buy. And as a result, stock prices plunged. At a certain point, people started to wonder if the stock exchange would survive. And in fact, they were wondering if the entire U.S. economy would survive. That's when J.P. Morgan stepped in. John Pierpont Morgan was the greatest financier of his time and one of the wealthiest men in the world. In desperation, the leading bankers and brokers in New York gathered in the library of Morgan's home to beg him for help. One of Morgan's first steps was to send a message to Jesse Livermore. The message was simple. For the good of the stock exchange, for the good of your country, please stop selling short. But Livermore had already come to that conclusion on his own. Just before the market was about to implode, Jesse Livermore took his profits and began to buy. When the dust settled, he had made more than a million dollars in a single day of trading. That's roughly $24 million in today's money. The following year, Jesse Livermore turned his attention to the commodity markets and switched his strategy to the long side. There is only one side to the market, and it is not the bull side or the bear side, but the right side. Jesse bought 140,000 bales of cotton on the commodity exchange of the Chicago Board of Trade. Rumors began to spread that Jesse Livermore was trying to corner the market in cotton. The price of cotton began to go up, but Livermore kept buying more. Then, on the morning of Tuesday, May 12, 1908, he started to sell. The market opened at 10 o'clock that morning. By 10 minutes after 10, he had sold every bale of cotton he owned at the top market price of $9.90 a bale. In today's money, Jesse Livermore made nearly $50 million, much of it in the first 10 minutes of trading. That's when the press started to call him the Cotton King. But Jesse Livermore barely knew the difference between cotton and wool, and he couldn't care less. What he did know was how to make money by trading stocks and commodities. That's what made him one of the richest men in the country. Jesse Livermore made so much money trading stocks and commodities on Wall Street that he owned four yachts. The most expensive was the 200-foot Athero II, which cost over $40 million in today's money to build. His mansion on Long Island, Evermore, was a steal at $250,000, or just under $4 million today. But he and his wife lavished another $15 million in today's dollars to improve it. Dorothy Livermore spent $2.3 million in today's dollars on landscaping, a million and a half on silverware, nearly $4 million on furniture, and almost $5 million on jade figurines alone. The mansion and yachts employed a staff of 80 full-time servants. When Jesse and Dorothy went on vacation, they traveled in their own railroad car, often to Palm Beach, Florida, where they maintained a suite of rooms at the famous Breakers Hotel. This lavish lifestyle was all because Jesse Livermore understood one little secret. But first, please watch this. Jesse Livermore, the greatest trader in stock market history, called his secret the pivotal point. In 1929, he used it to make $1.3 billion in today's dollars in just seven days of trading. For decades, the pivotal point has remained shrouded in mystery. But thanks to the investigative research of prize-winning journalist, market analyst, and trader John Markman, Jesse Livermore's secret has been revealed at last. Please join us on Tuesday, February 14th for an in-depth discussion with John Markman on Jesse Livermore's Pivotal Point. You'll get the chance to receive Markman's new ebook, Pivotal Point Trading, absolutely free. Don't delay. Reserve your spot by clicking the button below the screen. 
John Markman is one of the world's foremost experts on the life and times of Jesse Lauriston Livermore. When John Wiley and Sons decided to publish a new annotated version of Reminiscences of a Stock Operator, they asked John Markman to write it, in part because of his unique background as both a prize-winning journalist and an expert on stock rating and screening for MSN Money. Written in the form of a novel by Edwin Lefebvre in 1923, Reminiscences tells the story of Jesse Livermore and his rapid rise from rags to riches. Reminiscences is filled with advice on the techniques and pitfalls of trading, all of which still ring true today. If you've ever heard the phrase, the trend is your friend, or cut your losses and let your profits run, you're hearing the echoes of ideas that Livermore was amongst the first to articulate. But Reminiscences does not reveal Jesse Livermore's real secret of how to make money in the market. I had to find that on my own. In the process of researching the book, Markman had access to Livermore's records, notebooks, and journals. From his earliest days in the bucket shops, Livermore kept extensive notes on the movement of the stock market and detailed records of his trades. As Markman poured over these mysterious numbers, a new picture of Livermore's investment strategy began to emerge. When I was working on this project, I felt like an art restorer. I kept uncovering more and more layers of paint that nobody but Livermore had ever seen before. Reminiscences was supposed to be a tell-all book, but Livermore didn't tell everything he knew, and perhaps that's no surprise. When the book was published in 1923, Livermore was still actively trading. You can't blame him for not revealing his most precious secrets to the people who were trading against him. But I knew the secret was buried somewhere in those stacks of papers, notebooks, and journals. If only I could crack their code. Of course, hundreds of other stock market analysts have tried to crack that code over the years. But Markman had a tool most of them didn't possess, computer modeling. Going back to his days at Microsoft, John Markman was an expert at using computer algorithms to predict the movement of stock prices. When he plugged Livermore's old trading records into his computer, Markman began to understand how the pivotal point system worked. In its simplest form, Livermore's gift was this. He could look at the ticker tape and tell exactly when to buy a stock and exactly when to sell. That's what he meant by the pivotal point. And my computer models have proven that Livermore's system works just as well today as it did back then. Even better, actually. Because even though market conditions have changed, government regulations have changed, the leading stocks have changed, human nature has not changed. Which means it's still possible to be on the right side of the market when everyone else is on the wrong side. And as Jesse Livermore knew better than anyone, that's the place where fortunes are made. There is nothing new on Wall Street. Whatever happens in the stock market today has happened before and will happen again. Imagine for a moment what kind of impact this could have on your own trading. Imagine if you knew where the major turning points were in any stock, the point where a stock or even the market as a whole pivots from a downtrend to an uptrend. Imagine if you knew it before the majority of other investors did, but you don't have to imagine it. John Markman's computer models show the pivotal point in action. This chart, for example, tracks the meteoric rise of a company called Integrated Device Technology, Inc. IDTI makes semiconductors that are used in a variety of computing and communication devices. Jesse Livermore would have no idea what a semiconductor is, but he'd understand the meaning of this chart in a heartbeat. When the stock hit its pivotal point in November 1999, it was trading for only $17.92. Then just 10 months later, when it reached its top pivotal point in August 2000, it sold for $79. Investors who went along for this ride could have realized a gain of 340% during a time when the S&P 500 was returning only 16%. That's enough to turn an investment of $10,000 into $34,000 in less than a year. Markman's computer models show Livermore's pivotal point system working again and again. TJX, the parent company of TJ Maxx, went up 71.9% in 195 days after hitting its pivotal point. The oil drilling company, Helmerich & Payne, reached its pivotal point in late November of 2000 and soared 64.7% 
in just 98 days. After hitting its pivotal point in August of 2000, Darden Restaurant skyrocketed 55.6% in only 154 days. Gilead Sciences went up more than 50% in less than a year after crossing its pivotal point in December of 2013. And the biotech company Celgene jumped nearly 50% in less than six months after reaching its pivotal point in January of 2013. The results are impressive, but the question remains, how does it work? How did Livermore know exactly where to find the pivotal point? More importantly, how can you put this strategy to work in your own trading? To answer those questions, Weiss Research has scheduled an in-depth interview with John Markman at 3 p.m. Eastern Time on Tuesday, February 14th. You are invited to attend this discussion at no cost. Everyone who attends will get a chance to receive a free copy of John Markman's new ebook, Pivotal Point Trading. Admission to this online discussion is absolutely free. But to limit the number of attendees, we must ask you to register no later than 5 p.m. Eastern Time on Monday, February 13th. To register now, click the button below the video screen. You will receive an email confirming your registration with instructions on how to join the discussion on Tuesday, the 14th of February. Please don't delay. Click the button below this video to reserve your place now and make a note on your calendar to join us on the 14th of February for a discussion that could change the way you trade forever.